Hey guys, thanks for watching Be Better Golf. All right, I am uh, testing out some new equipment that I got for Christmas. I got this microphone set that I think is gonna be really important for the channel. Usually I haven't done recently a lot of vlogs or stuff. First because of a sickness that I had for a while and then um, because of the editing time to put those together. It's very difficult, but this might change everything because I might be able to do everything just kind of in camera. Anyway, so let's get into the training of what I'm thinking and what I'm going to be doing today. Okay, so if you've watched the channel for any amount of time, you've probably seen in my swing something that I do that a lot of people do is uh, I do get a little taller in the backswing. So because I get taller, I have to get even lower before I hit the ground. So I'd like to maintain my level a little bit better. I think there's uh, reasons beyond aesthetically. There's... There's reasons that I want to keep my level a lot better. And then there's been teachers who have told me, who've, who've contacted me, he's like, no, no, you doing that, that's good. Don't get rid of that. But it is something that I've decided that I, I, I do wanna work on. So what I'm gonna do to do that, because I, I've seen in talking to these, a lot of these different guys, that the, uh, the brain is very tricky to try to get to change anything. So one thing that I've seen is that when I'm on this balance pad that I'm going to be toting around tonight and I take swings, my level doesn't change. My level really stays, you know, very good and centered. It's like I, I got to stay balanced. So I stay, I, but then when I'm not on that, I tend to stand up. So I'm going to be doing a versus tonight. So I got, I have two balls. I got this Strixon ball which will be normal and this Titleist ball here that'll be on the pad. I'm going to play two golfers effectively. One of my players, so to speak, is going to take every shot from the tee to the to the hole uh standing with one foot on the balance pad and then the other shot is the other is just going to be a normal shot. And I think that'll do really well to blend in um the skill of the thing that's doing well on this pad into my regular swing. That's the idea. As I'm doing this, this will give me a good chance to be able to tell you guys some stuff that's going on with the channel. Also, some things that I've been thinking golf-wise that I think have been real important. All right, but let's get into this. 138 yards. Right there. Hit it good. It's a little left, but it's kind of cutting. It might come back. We'll see. So I'll have to look at the review and see if my level was, was very good. It was any good there or not. The strike there was all right. Not world class or anything, but it was okay. Now, usually when I come out here, I don't, I don't use a tee unless I'm over 130 yards because that starts to then somewhat be into the range of there are some par threes over 130 yards. So here's my tricks on. If I'm under 130 yards, I'm not gonna, I don't use a tee, which is, I think today, this is the only hole that's over 130 yards. So I wanna keep that same feeling I had there, but then just kind of forget about it and focus on this other stuff that I've been focusing on. Okay, 138 yards. Really solid, way up in the air, coming down right at it, like a yard right of it. I just, it's dark, so I can't tell for distance control, but let's go see. I really like the impact though. Okay, so here is the first ball, which is, this is the, this is the title. It's the one that I'm hitting off the balance pad. The, the other shot, sorry it's so dark here, There's, it's usually better lit. The, uh, the other shot is way off the back. So it was dead straight, but it went way off the back. Uh, so I'll have to chip that one. Okay, so this one. So we'll call this player B.
Come back. All right, so the tap ends I'm not gonna do on the pad. So that is a, that is a par. And now I'm gonna put the camera right over here because I am going to be, I have to walk all the heck the way back there because it really just rocketed off. 18 steps past, that's just, because the thing is, I hit the ball more. When I stay in my posture like that, the ball goes further and I don't need such a long backswing. So shorter backswing, more power, that, that's, that's exactly what I want. All right, let's try to hit a good chip here. Have you guys seen that training aid that they're advertising? And uh, go baby, that was a good one. Have you guys seen that training aid they're advertising? It looks like it's your right arm is in a cast. That's really what it is. It's, it's a cast that you slip on your arm that they use for chipping. So you really, you can't bend your right arm at all. And it kind of locks you, locks you into this position and you go. And so, you know, you guys know I've been talking a lot about training aids and guidance, things that help you and things that uh, kind of introduce more chaos into your swing. So that would be a type of thing where I think that's a really good training aid, but only if you, all you do is look at it. Like you look at it and you see what it's supposed to do and then you do it without ever putting it on because that is kind of the, the, a good feeling to have, but you wouldn't want to put it on because then it would be helping you do that. You're, to do something well, you gotta be able to do it yourself. All right, so let's tap this right to left. Drain, oh no, uh, there's a lot of footprints here. As soon as I hit that, it just rocketed off the right-hand side. And it's dark as a dungeon here. Yeah, that's, that's a shame. It was in some kind of a crater there, so it took off to the right. Okay, so that's one hole up for the pad. The pad made a par. So not only do I have the challenge of hitting off this pad, this uh, pillow, I get the additional challenge of it's dark as a dungeon right here. It does, believe me, they have lights on most of these. Some of these, these lights, see that's covered by a tree, so they, I think they just shut it off. Because until they trim the tree, they can't turn it back on. Anyway, if you guys have ever played golf in the, like real late in the day, when, or basically when it gets totally dark, like, you know, in the summer when you're out at like 9 p.m. trying to get in like the last shot, you'll know that Finding the swing bottom in the dark is extremely tough. All right, eight plus it's now to the middle. So it's gonna be like 105, 110. So I get this gap wedge. So I'm gonna be here, there, here, there. You guys probably can't see this, but bear with me. All right, let's see, stay in it. All right, hit it maybe a little heavy, but very straight. I might have crept on the green there. Very, very straight. I, w I wasn't sad about that. It wasn't that bad of a shot. All right, now, without the pad. But uh, the key is to the transference, I gotta still use, hit this shot as if I need that much balance because in actuality, you do, if you want to hit it well. All right, hit that much more solid than the other one. Pulled left a little bit, but I think that should be pin high. Yeah, that felt really good. Even though I bogeyed the other one, the strike of both the shots without the balance pad was good. So I think this is gonna be a really effective form of training. All right, it's real dark here, but I wanted to make some points in general if you can see me at all. I'll let you know some things that are happening on the channel. Coming up at the end of January 2020, uh, my nephew Jack just turned 18. So as a um, kind of a gift or whatever to him, I'm gonna be flying him to 
Florida and we're going to be going to the PGA show together representing Be Better Golf. So that should be like a total ton of fun. We're going to get a whole bunch of videos and everything. So make sure that you uh, subscribe to the channel and, and even if you are subscribed, everybody make sure that you're subscribed and you hit the bell because Jack and I are going to be doing a lot of live broadcasts from the PGA show in Orlando interviewing um, club equipment people, training aid, aid people and showing all these new cool products that they have and stuff like that. But uh, you only see those, you won't get notified that those live broadcasts are happening unless you click that bell. Okay. So here's the one that was with the pad. So that was I probably, I had the yardage a little bit wrong there, but came up sh a little short because so, it was slightly heavy, which is to be expected from that kind of from the darkness and the, the awkward lot uh, the uh, you know the balance issues that you have with it so yeah okay so that training aid that, that I was telling you guys about it's basically like imagine it's just this cast that goes all the way to here so I think it's good but only really to look at it as like a visual I, I wouldn't really use it I guess I would try it but but that's but in general, you because that is a good feeling. All right, so this I have a bad lie here. There's a, a clump behind my ball, so I'm gonna try to film Mickelson this as far as hit this fat on purpose and slide the ball up like that. Go, go. Ooh, landed soft. Hmm, hit that exactly like I wanted to. It landed soft. All right, recently, I've just started listening. I'd never really listened to any golf podcast before in my life. But just recently, I started listening to the Hank Haney podcast a couple times. Like, uh, during the President's Cup is the thing that got me into that. But right after the President's Cup, he did, like, a, a series on, like, what he really likes his players to think about. And one thing that he talks about constantly is uh, eliminating three putts and just how crucial it is not to waste shots on the green by three putting. So I'm, I really want to rededicate myself this year 20, in 2020 to being like an, the absolute best putter I can be. Like see how good I can actually get if I'm real consistent with my practice and very focused over every putt I hit the entire year. Okay. So it's gonna be slow, uphill, right to left, and over the putt I'm just thinking about center contact and the sound. Go, stretch, stretch, stretch. All right, great putt. Right to about a foot, maybe a little. Yeah, just over a foot, 13 inches or so. All right, that's a good par. So that's a par with the um, normal stance. The great thing about doing something like this out here at night, let me move my marker, is, I mean, you can't, I wouldn't be able to do this during the day when everybody else, you know, hit two balls and one of them all goofy like this. One, two, three. All right, so 12 foot putt. But the thing about the brain is that it is highly, highly specific. Like there's all these different tasks. Like let's say somebody, let's say two tasks, they seem like almost exactly alike, but the brain can say like, oh, oh, this is a different, it can say like, okay, I'm going to do this differently because this is a different task. So your brain knows the difference between when you're doing it on the pad and when you're doing it just normally without it. So to get it to cross over and have the skill transfer from when you do it on the pad to when you do it without it, you really have to kind of trick the brain and do a lot of, that's why I talk about flip flopping. But so that's why I'm doing this drill, but on the course, because then also your brain will say, Oh, well, that's a, that's a range thing. That's not a course thing. That's not the skill I have. All right, so let's try to make this par. 
Ah, that was me. I pulled that a little bit. I let the, the club head out past the handle just a little bit in the transition of that putt. One thing I've learned out here is that my laser rangefinder does not really work in the dark. So, I've just got to kind of trust the stones and whatever else. It, this is 95 yards. So I want to talk about goals. Let me know in the comments below, let me know what are your goals and be specific as you like. Let me know what are your goals for 2020 because I'm going to look at those comments and based on what your guys' goals are for 2020, that's what I'm going to be concentrating on when I interview these different instructors about how to be better at golf or these different uh, motor learning scientists that I'm going to in interview a lot in 2020. Like if, if uh, speed is your goal or put, uh, better putting or chipping or um, fitness, whatever it is, like, let me know your goals in there. And uh, I'm going to share, share with you guys very detailed what my goals are for 2020. And hopefully we can work together and I want to deliver, give you guys a lot of value for being subscribers. Okay. So this is 95 yards. Okay, a little eyes closed. Man, I, for some reason I just feel very, I mean, I should feel awkward, but I just feel very awkward right now. All right. I got it. 95 right there at the flag. Solid. Okay, it went a mile in the air. It's right on line. Go. Oh, I think I hit it right by the flag stick. That's good. It'll be interesting to see these swings in comparison side by side. Whatever training aid you're using should be making your task harder or it should kind of uh, inform you in some way that you're not able to do normally. So the pad definitely makes it harder, but then it kind of unlocks my own personal balance because the, the false sense that you have is that you can swing and because you're on solid ground in a flat lie, you can swing and you can be kind of out of balance and save it. But if you want to hit it on the button, I actually need to recruit just as much balance on this shot that I'm going to hit now that I did when standing on that. That's what you got to get your brain into is like, okay, like just because the ground's solid here and it's not a weird lie or anything, you still need to recruit your own personal sense of balance just as much. All right, 95 there. Oh, it's solid. It's just a little left. Okay. Yeah, one thing that that Marcus Bell guy said that I, I've interviewed a couple times, your body is, is not interested in the success of your golf shot. Your body's interested in not falling over. So that one, I, I bet you the, the face went left because my balance got disturbed a little bit. Okay, the ball on the right-hand side of your screen is my, the shot off the pad, which landed right here and backed up to here. So from my point of view, which was directly back that way, it looked a lot closer than it actually was. And this is going to be a challenge to hit it nine. So 27 feet of challenge, you hit it a perfect 27 feet in the dark and everything. That's the, one of the main things in 2020 is that, that I want to improve in uh, all areas of everything I do with golf <laughs> is my consistency. Not so much like everybody always talks about like consistency of like their strikes or the results, but I wouldn't just want, want to be a lot more consistent in my training and in my, my discipline. So the things that I'm going to do to get better, like I want to, like I, I have a pretty good idea of what I need to do to be better at golf or uh, continue to, be, to get better at golf but you got to be very consistent with it and with a life and everything else and a regular job and whatever else it's difficult but if it means something to you you got to do it all right stretch oh set all right that's inside 10 inches got a chance here no that's wimpy all right so that's two pars for 
So this is my regular ball. So this is par with the regular ball. This one is the balance pad. I'll lift my foot up. All right, going to the next hole. This next hole always, it's, it's good when you're playing golf to, at like certain courses to, if you have a problem with certain holes, it's, it, it pays dividends to kind of acknowledge that problem and sometimes even say it out loud. If you can kind of acknowledge it, sometimes you can just wipe it away. Like this hole, I always hit it too far on this hole. Um, but earlier today when I was filming that other round that had the audio problem, I, I was going through, I went through my process of like how I choose distances and how I choose shots as far as how hard I'm going to hit it and everything. And I kind of revealed something to myself in that process that was, I think, important. This was a 111 only to the, to the, because it's a red flag. So it was only 111. So usually just, there's something about this hole, be, maybe because there's, there's trees crowded in on either side and then, and they're a different color than the trees that are crowded in on the back. There's something visually that makes this hole look a lot further than it is. Pitching wedge for me goes 128 yards in this weather, which it's probably about um, 58 degrees or 62 degrees, something like that here in Long Beach, California. So that means I have to, to hit this 111 yards, I have to take off 17 yards. So what am I gonna do to get 17 yards less of this? I'm going to choke up on it. That'll give me about seven or eight. And then I'm, I'm gonna swing only to my armpit and that'll give me the rest of it, which so if it, if it gives me 17, that'll, be, that'll take 10 more off. But I'm not really gonna change my tempo or my, the effort level in my swing at all. I think that's a like, really high level to be able to take a, a full swing, but with a, a different effort level and still get the same control. Okay. No. Okay, that's better. All right, so I'm on the pad here, and I want to hit a 111. Great balance. Challenge it. Oh, I hit it good. Man, I hit that good. All right. See, I really like the way I hit it when I'm on that thing. I wonder if, is it changing? Let me know in the comments. Is it changing my level? As far as do I stay on a better up and down? Like, usually I get higher in the backswing. Am I staying lower? And on, on YouTube, if you use the, the period and the comma button, you can go frame by frame on videos, which is a huge revelation for me for watching golf videos. All right, so now I want to keep that same feeling. So just like I'm, I need all the balance in the world in order to hit a good shot, because really you do. You just need to get your brain to realize that you need that much balance. All right, just to my armpit, 111. Oh, it was nice. A little left trying to cut back. Oh, it's too dark for me to see, but I was happy with both of those. I mean, very, very solid on the button. That's the, that's the thing that I heard about Fred Couples and Tom Watson both. Um, they had said that, I don't, I forget which one said it, but I think they both had said this, or one person said it and the other one agreed with them. Like Tom Watson, I think, said he went a period of five years where he hit every ball he hit. It was just like flushed and on the button. Like sometimes they would miss a little left or a little right or they would, you know, like misjudge the swing as far as like how hard to hit it and would go long or short. But every shot they hit would be just solid and on the button again and again and again. And that is some kind of uh, crazy skill to have. And the other thing was uh, that I heard that made me think of this too, was uh, Paul Azinger, when he was interviewed on the Golf Channel, was talking about how a lot of the new drivers came out while he was on tour and, and they were all talking about like creating a bigger sweet spot and more forgiveness. And he was like, well, I don't need a bigger sweet spot. He's like, I need something that big, something as big as the end of his finger. Okay, so the ball that I said I hit really good that was just uh, traditional stance, no, no, no balance pad, is this ball here that's about, what do you call that, 12 feet away. And then the other one 
is over to the right, about, I'd say, 21 feet away, let's see. So that's without a pad, and then this is with the pad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, 21 feet away. Remember, this was a 111-yard shot. And I wish it was brighter out here, but it's not. Brendan on the pad is one up of Brendan just normally. So there's 21 feet up the hill and then creeping down it. Up the hill, now creeping down it. That's way too much. That's just awful. Lag putting in the dark is just so hard. All right, so let's see. Normal stance here for birdie. This is to get back even for, for normal stance. No, blocked it out to the right. So this will be, this is a par for normal stance. Now I'm gonna take the pad here, really try my best to save par for my, from the pad, to prove something here. Oh, it was a good stroke, ah, it didn't go in, damn. Okay, this hole is dark as a dungeon. One, two, three. I won't be able to putt there. I have good light here, but up there I won't be able to putt very effectively anyway. So I'm gonna make this a closest to the pin hole between myself on the balance pad and then myself without the balance pad. All right, so it's, what did I say? What did I say, for 121? All right, so let's figure out, 121, so I basically can hit a pitching wedge I don't like to say normal because as soon as you say like oh I'm gonna hit a normal pitching wedge that immediately introduces doubt because you're, you're already thinking like gosh I can't even hit a normal pitching wedge so like there's a judgment on on top of that word normal already I mean I'm trying I'm not like getting super mental about it but I'm just saying Definitely, if you just say, like, okay, just hit a normal one here. Like, I don't think, I don't think you're going to hear a lot of caddies on the PGA Tour tell guys to hit normal shots. I will hear them sometimes they say, like, plus two or minus five. Like, you know, like, what you got to put on extra or take off less. So this is, this would be like a plus one pitching wedge. In that's not the flag. All right, that's the flag. I got to kind of cut this a little bit. Oh, that's a solid golf shot, and it is cutting, too. All right, we'll see. That should be just short right of the pin. I don't know. I'd have to see. I feel like I'm hitting it more solid and on the button off the pad than I am just with my regular swing. And all that is is just my, like, when I'm on the pad, my brain realizes, like, hey, buddy, if you want to hit this ball, you got to recruit a bunch of balance. So let me just get that same level of commitment from my body and recruitment from my body. Yeah, I can actually see that first ball. It's a pretty good shot. Okay, here, so let's try to get this one closer. Oh, that's a good shot too. A little bit more to the right, but I think it'll be close. So the, the second shot, the one on normal stance, that was better distance, but the first shot was better direction. I'm, I can definitely hit it further without the pad, but the quality, of, as far as like my perceived smash factor, the way it like has the heaviness of hit feels much heavier when I'm standing on the pad, which makes me think that I'm compressing it better on the pad. Okay, so let's talk about be Better Golf 2020 goals. So not really channel goals, but like for me personally as a, as a golfer, what I want to get accomplished this year. 2020, I want to, I have, uh, uh, one of the things I want to do is uh, that's just the most obvious and kind of straightforward thing that I want to do is I do want to continue what I've been doing on the speed work and really get up into the 160s consistently, where it's like, almost all my drives are in the mid 160s. And then some of my strongest drives are 
um, above 170 on the foresight because I have noticed that the flight scope that, that I used in Kansas and also when I've been on TrackMan, those are hotter and, than the foresight. The foresight seems to be the slowest of the bunch and I would also say that foresight seems to be the closest to actual reality of the bunch. Um, I think when it comes to ball speed. Okay, so look, so these balls, just to let you know who the closest to the pin is, I'm not gonna putt these, it's just too dark. My, this, that's me on a normal stance over there, and that, that's me, uh, this front one is me on the pad. So I actually got it closer normal stance than I did on the pads. Normal stance is one up on the pad. That's my first goal. So I'm trying to, but I'm trying to make like my goals not so much end result goals, but more process goals. What I mean is that like, okay, the end result, yes, I, I want to have faster ball speed consistently and stuff, but that's not really the goal. The goal would be commit to myself. There's 52 weeks in a year. I want to commit to myself to do training for my swing speed twice a week, every week, every week in the year. You guys may have seen, but I've been doing the Be Better Golf speed pods training for the last couple months with uh, some Be Better Golfers come out to, the, to a park in, in Long Beach with me. And we go through with the, the Golf Stick Pro, which is this thing. We go through the Golf Stick Pro on the light side, on the heavy side, we do the full protocol. And also we do a lot of other things that are very, that I've, from the, with the tools, you know, that Wiggly Bar and all the other uh, Tour Tempo tools that I have from Kansas. And uh, we just take an hour twice a week on Sundays and Tuesdays and just work on our speed, like things that are proven to make you faster. And I was getting really good results with that. But then, uh, like I said earlier, I got sick. I broke out in horrible hives all over my body and I, I basically couldn't do anything until I figured out uh, a medication to keep them kind of at bay, which is, what I, which is what I'm doing now. So that's the process goal is what you want to concentrate on. So when you're making your goals, don't, don't be like, I want to be a scratch golfer by the end of the year. Your goal should be like, I want to get a lesson every other week and I want to play four rounds of golf a week or whatever, you know, like th those should be like the process of what you want to do. Okay. So this is, I believe this is the right club for this. All right. So this is, I think 125 yards or so. So kind of like the last hole. Maybe just a little less. I'm gonna play at 122. So that means I'm gonna choke up on the, that means it helps me to, to think about, okay, how much do I have to take off of this club more than to think about the full number? So 122 means I wanna hit a minus six. So I wanna take six yards off of this. So I'm just gonna do that with the grip. Otherwise, everything else is gonna be um, the full way. So here, really recruit my balance. No. There we go. I'm doing this pressure thing that's been helping me. Let's just, I'll show you guys in a minute. Okay, so I got on my balance pad here. Challenge yourself to hit it solid. Ooh, I hit it really solid. It's just peeling to the right a little bit. Got a great bounce off the the, the back slope of the bunker. And I think it kicked it pin high. Love the solidness of strike. Face was a little open. All right, so I am going to choke up on this even just a little bit more and really get that feeling there. Yeah. So there, there, right there, kind of a little lower. Ah, similar line to the last one I hit. The contact of that one was not as good as the one on the pad. Let's go up there and see how I did. This is my shot that I hit without the pad, just a regular stance. That was maybe slightly, that was slightly fat. And my other shot is pin high. The solidness of the hit is the thing that's really important with your wedges and irons, a lot more than uh, your effort level or your speed. Okay. 
I'll sit down. Sit down. Yeah, that's a little too much. That's way too much. I got wrapped up in doing the right technical thing and it was just too hard. I landed it like two steps in front of the flag when I should have landed it ten steps in front of the flag. So that's pretty stupid. That'll happen. If anybody goes out and does this on the golf course, let me know. Because your your brain, and that's seven, so that's 21 feet. Your brain absolutely knows the difference between hitting shots on the range and hitting shots on the course. So all that cool stuff that you're learning to do on the range, your brain knows that it's a, it's a different thing. It's a different task. Like the space is different. So whatever drill that's been helping you on the range, it, it, it'll be really good to bring that to the course, which is what I'm trying to do today. Okay. So I'm on this pad, 21 feet, concentrate, get the good strike out of the center in the hole. That's a little wimpy, just a little wimpy. All right, so that's a par. So I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm, I'm one up regular stance. So this is to stay one up regular stance. No, misread. Very hard to read in the dark here. But there's guys that do it well. They have this, this skins game out here and I never want to make any money in that and I gotta get my nighttime reads a lot better. The next tee box is in like total pitch darkness. I won't even be able to see my feet there. So I'm gonna hit this next shot. I'll actually I'll hit them both out of the rough so I don't disturb the the fringe here. Yes, so 64 yards. And I've always been going pad first, so let's go pad first again. Maybe I shouldn't actually come to think of it. Maybe I'm use I'm starting to use this pad as a crutch on my regular swing, so I'm gonna go regular ball first. 64 yards. That's the main thing like a training aid can turn into a crutch real quick and it'll actually be holding you back. Even though you're hitting good shots with it, it'll be holding you back a little bit. Alright, so you don't wanna get into too much of a routine. You gotta always be changing it up. 64 yards. So with this club, that's this club to my armpit. Okay, just like I'm on a par five here. Good solid shot right at the hole. It's in the light, it's looking really good. Yeah, great shot. I'm glad I didn't hit off the pad first that time because that could have been it. A, a real error in training to be flip-flopping the same way every time. All right, now I'm on the pad, 64 yards. I want to just have good tempo. Uh, hit it good, just a little left this time. Yeah, that was too far left, pin high. But uh, I kind of tried to get some, I think I got off balance a little bit, tried to get some extra just speed out of it. And I recruited that extra speed by twisting the face shut, so it went a little bit left. This is with a uh, regular stance. So this, whoop, and I am, I can see, I gotta be careful here. I'm actually totally inside the ground there. If I would have putted that, it would have hopped up and probably missed. So that's a birdie on that ball. So that means to, to stay tied on the pad, I've got to make this putt here. A lot of times people, when they watch these vlogs or vlogs that I've done, especially like with the voiceovers afterwards, they'll say like, man, you have an excuse for every bad shot you hit. Well, it's, it's not really about an excuse. It's really like an exploration of like why things happen. So. This was a good shot. It was the appropriate weight and I hit it the appropriate hardness, but it went a little left and it's starting to show me that the reason that that's happening more than anything else is lack of trust. Like I'm going through and I feel like that's not enough from that backswing length I made. I feel like that's not enough power. So I'm putting some twist in it at the end to try to give it some extra power. And that's 
what's is twisting it to the left. So that lack of trust could be the difference between a par and a birdie. Ah, see, so just blocked just a little bit. So it's up and down from 64 yards, regular stance, and up and two putt off the pad. So now regular stance is in the lead. Yeah, because you would think, I mean, if somebody didn't play golf and they were just saying like, hey, who do you, which golfer do you think would do better? A golfer just on his normal feet or a golfer standing with one foot on one of these pads, you know? You would think, uh, oh yeah, on his normal feet would be, be you know, way better. But golf is, you know, it's not like that. It's because in golf, you're doing it. Things that make you more, this kind of increases actually your awareness of what your body's doing. All right, so I'm going to change it a little bit here. And I'm going to this time go, let's see, what do we have? 100, and this is kind of longer here. 140 yards from this stone, is that right? So I'm going to put it on a little bit of a baby tee here. And I'm going to, I could hit a hard 9-iron, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to hit an easy 8-iron or a choked up 8-iron. So this 8-iron means I have to take 10 yards off of it. So I'm going to take off most of that with the shorter grip and then some of that with, a, with only swinging to about my neck. And this time I'm going to do, do it differently where I've been putting the pad on my right foot, which is I'm more comfortable with. has been the way that I found it really helps me. But this time I'm going to make it even more difficult. I'm going to put it on my left, my left foot. Okay. Okay, and a really solid hit here. Ooh, I hit it solid. I just wiped it a little bit. To be expected off the, off the pad. Just can't finish. You can see I, I got up this way. It's all right. 140. Okay, this is the drill that I've been doing normally when I've been playing. So if you see, see how when you take your grip, if you let, let go, open your right hand and you're going through impact, see this right trigger finger here? All right, so when you're going through impact, if you don't feel any pressure on that right trigger finger with your hand open, and you, so I've been closing my eyes, opening my hand, and I wanna feel through impact pressure on that right trigger finger. If you're doing, have no lag tension, your hands are not leading through, I'm calling it leading now. They're not leading through. You're not gonna feel that pressure through there. So you wanna go eyes closed and feel that pressure through there. So two eyes closed swings like that has been kind of part of my routine back there. Then when I come in here, choked up just a little bit, Right there, like that. Oh, I hit that good. That is just a laser, a low laser. We'll see. Man, Divot was great. Divot was really great. What I mean by a great Divot is it's, it's totally square going in. So some Divots, like the one I hit off the pad, where you'll see it won't be square, like it'll, it'll start on uh, the toe side or the, or the heel side, usually for me the toe side, digging the ground out first and then the ground. The other, this one is like basically like a, a little bit fatter of a normal dollar bill, but the same length as the dollar bill, a little bit fatter. And as I'm doing this, and I can still see roots of the grass, which means I didn't go totally into the ground. So that means I had the squareness of the face and I also had the shallowness of the strike. So that was, uh, that was good. Uh, being able to analyze your divots. I mean, some, some teachers say, say like, oh, all you need is the divot. You don't need a, a launch monitor or, or um, you know, like a foresight machine with, with the dots on it, with the, uh, you know, GC quad or the HMT unit. 
to be able to see. You can just look at the, what the ball did and then look at the divot. And that can show you a lot, but the machine is, is next level for what it can show you. Plus, you don't need to be a total expert to read the machine, it's obvious. All right, so this is, the, the, the pin was back there, just so you can see, get some perspective on what's happening right now. So this is the shot I hit without the pad there, and then the shot I hit with the pad is in the rough right there. So they're both totally, like, almost exactly pin high, so that's like a little less than a yard pin high. This eight iron that I hit there that was not on the pad, but just regular stance, that was, I'm, and landed here, skipped a yard to there, coming in very low. That was, maybe I'm being hyperbolic with it, but that was one of the, the best feeling iron shots I ever hit. The big theme of 2019 on Be Better Golf has been lag tension, without a doubt. I mean, that's been the big revelation of, it was kind of like discovering that that's the major, major difference in the different levels of golfer and everything. And that's the feeling, uh, that shot had it, without a doubt. And that's the feeling of it. So that's kind of what, uh, what I'm doing with that. Eyes closed, open right hand, uh, pressure through the bottom, like this. See, that didn't happen. Like that. So that's kind of what I'm doing. And I mean, I would love that. 140 yard eight iron that's just like kind of a sawed off low little bullet that, you know, just lands on the, the green like a dart. That'd be awesome. Okay into this shot. All right, so I got my pad here. I got a 60 degree wedge. So I got my landing spot there. Ah, a little too hard. It was it actually the swing itself wasn't too hard. The uh, it was thin, which is something I've been fighting. Oh man. I just jacked it up the line too much. I'm going to count that other one as a miss because that was just so bad. This is 138 yards and something that I was thinking, we're going to call it that I'm one up regular stance. Let's just call it that. I don't know how good my scoring is. It's probably awful, but that's fine. 138 yards. And something I was thinking about is a level of comfort when you're chaining. So even though it's difficult to be on the wobbly pad and stuff, I started through the match, I started to realize that, hey, I'm getting pretty comfortable doing it on my right leg. So that's why I switched it to my left leg. And then I also noticed like, okay, I'm getting pretty comfortable hitting off the wobbly pad and then hitting a regular shot. So I got you gotta like create more uh, chaos and make yourself more uncomfortable in your training so that when you're so that's the kind of the things that unlock the uh, the and I could tell like over here like coming up to this shot I was looking forward to hitting the shot off the wo wobbly pad forward so you got to kind of catch yourself like okay buddy this is you're not out here to make yourself feel comfortable or to um, uh, prove some point about your swing or whatever you know, keeping your, keeping your level or whatever it is. You're out here to kind of confuse and trick up your brain because the real key that I want to be able to do is to do this on the course when there's no balance pad, there's no, nothing like that. I think this is going to be, having this microphone is going to be a huge boost for Be Better Golf and for people who like to see the vlogs. People always ask for vlogs. They always get awful views, but uh, I like doing them. Uh, but I hate editing them. This is going to allow me to make vlogs and not have to really edit them at all. Like, there's nothing I have to do on this. There's no voiceover to put on it. You're just, you know, basically cutting out some of the fat. That's about it. So they'll be very long videos, but I think they'll be enjoyable. All right, where am I going even? I can't see the flag. Okay, I think that's... Eh. I'm going to guess from the where, where I knew it was before. 138 plus it's blue so it's like 144. I got my eyes closed and I'm feeling that pressure through the hit. A little bit of a fade. I'm going to aim a little left. If it fades that's okay. If it doesn't that's okay. Oh good strike. It didn't fade. It actually maybe drew a yard. So because it drew a yard, it might have gone too far. 
the strike was good. I can say the one thing that I can say in doing this kind of training, even though I was on this pad, I played, this will be 18 holes of golf. So nine holes, you know, two different players. I played 18 holes, but I didn't, I hit one shot that was fat. Other shot has been trying to make a comeback here through Brendan off the pad here. So I want to be here. There. Oh, I thinned it just as I said that. But it's going to be thin to win. That's going to be a really good shot. Okay, so just to see, because I don't want to end on that one. Now I'm going to go back to the original task here. My right foot, this really keeps me in my posture. I think you'll see my posture. And it gets me much more kind of loaded a little bit differently, a little bit better. Yeah, that's good. And I can feel, I feel like into the swing here when I'm here like that. And that's what I got to get into, into my regular swing. All right, let's go up there and see where the, these are, these are at. Yeah, so coming up on the channel, Jack and I are going to be going to the PGA show in Orlando. So PGA show 2020 January, uh, at the end of January. And uh, doing some cool videos there. Also, I want to do a Be Better Golf School also, actually, I think in Orlando in March. So I'm, I think like March 11th or something like that with Tony Lutzak, who, uh, Dr. Tony Lutzak, he just, Tony just got his doctorate in human factors engineering. So, uh, and he's learned like, even in just the last six months, he's learned a lot more about, um, not, not really the golf swing. I think he, he's had a, 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 like an incredibly solid handle on that, but like a little bit more on how to get people to do what, they're, what they want to do more. So more into the, the motor learning aspect of it, motor control aspect of it. So yeah, so, so if you're interested in that, send me an email, contactbebettergolf at gmail.com. And then um, I'm also thinking about bringing Birdie out Birdie Cordell from DST Golf. Uh, so, you know, talking about leg tension and all that stuff. I would love to do, just for me, I would love to do a, a golf school with Birdie. Um, I think it would just be totally awesome and really get people's impact totally changed and stuff like that using his tools, but also like he's just great as an instructor too and a former tour player as well. He used to play on the European Challenge Tour. So those are the things that are coming up on the channel. So these are my two shots here. Which one's which? That's why I need a yellow ball and a, a white ball. That's on the pad and this is regular stance because this one drew. I mean, I don't like putting. The thing is I, I find myself not wanting to fully invest in these lag putts because it's dark. It's like I'm giving myself an excuse. So I gotta really jazz myself into hitting up the proper speed here even though it is the challenge on the, in the darkness. Ah, see, I did not hit that hard enough. Yeah, it's, it's all right. I mean, it's three feet away. I didn't hit it hard enough. I gave myself an excuse before I even hit that putt. That's mental weakness right there. Okay. A little bit of an advantage having hit the other putt first. Go in. All right, so. Good. Now without the pad to win the match, one up. Good. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I gotta continue to do this kind of training. I really think, like I was saying, your brain really knows the difference from task to task to task. So even if you're doing something really well on the driving range, you might not, like your brain might say like, okay, well that's a driving range thing. That's not a thing that I do on the course. You know, as soon as you, as soon as you step on the course into that different environment, your brain might just be like, well, forget all that stuff that you, that you learned on the range. So bring your drills, bring your um, feels and all this stuff to the course. Like that's one of the things you see 
tour players doing on uh, before the Pro-Am day. So they have Wednesday that they do the Pro-Am and then Thursday, Friday. If you can get out on a Tuesday, uh, not, not so much a Mon Monday is kind of like, I see that as like a, a lot of a, like a range day kind of almost for them. But like if you get out on a Tuesday, they'll do some work on the range and then they'll go and they'll like play nine holes or 18 holes. But it, it's not really playing because they're not really keeping score. They're dropping balls in different locations. They're trying different things. And a lot of times they're out there with their caddy or, or their coach and uh, they'll be doing the drills that they've been doing on the range. They'll be doing those feels like out on the course. So if your coach is going to take you for like a playing lesson, it's, it's almost like I think the best way to do it is like, like, yeah, I want to do my normal range lesson, like this technical stuff that we've been working on on the range. But I want to do that like on the course because there is a, a big disconnect. And also, like, I think uh, even I mean, a lot of times people say like, oh, I just I can't get my range game to the course. Well, actually, like your range game is your course game for the most part when it comes to impact and lag tension and stuff, because it's just that you on the range, you have uh, you've timed that flip really well. But then on the course, you're hitting different shots and different lies and then going from club to club, from this club to that club to that club and, and different. So that the effect of your poor lag tension shows up much more on the course because you, you haven't f timed that flip from hitting like eight, seven irons in a row or hitting 27 uh, drives in a row or something like that. So really, uh, I think the best place to learn uh, anything is obviously is is on the course, but it's but you can learn on the range too. It's just all in the way that you do it, and uh, this I think is a good gap. So I have to see. I want to continue this training, see if my level can get a little bit better. Stuff that's coming up on the channel. I'm going to the PGA show coming up, so you want to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, and you hit the little bell so that you'll be notified that when, of when I'm going live from demo day and then also on the floor and then also Jack and I are going to be playing a bunch of golf there as well. That'll be fun. There'll be videos coming out for that. Let me know what you want to see if, or, or any uh, people you want me to try to interview. Coming up in March 2020, also I think we're going to do a Be Better Golf School in Florida. I'm also thinking about setting one up in La Quinta in the spring, possibly with one of the English guys that's been on the channel, either uh, Bertie or Marcus. So if you guys are interested in working with those guys, uh, with uh, Tony in Florida or Bertie and Marcus in California, let me know. Send me an email, contactbebettergolf at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.